I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. I am on the, the rock, rock, and the rock, rock is higher than high. Jehovah hide me, I'm under the rock. Go tell my enemies, I'm under the rock. Jehovah hide me, I'm under the rock. I am under the rock. The rock is higher than high. Jehovah hide me, I'm under the rock. Go tell my enemies. I'm on the rock. Jehovah hide me. I'm on the rock. If you know the Lord is keeping, keeping you, you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? He's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, he's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, yes. It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have his hands to hold, as long as he watches over my soul, as long as I'm under his control, it is all right. One more time. It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as I have my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have his eyes to hold, as long as he watches over my soul, as long as I'm under his control, it is all right. What a mighty God we serve, oh yes, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve, oh yes, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. 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 Our opening hymn is Hymn 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. The Lord's a rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool in shade, on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim's man, a shelter in the time of storm, a shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes are fright, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool in shade, on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim's band, a shelter in the time of storm. 
raging floods may round us beat as shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat as shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool in shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrims band as shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge there as shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our help forever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool in shade, on the burning sand, faithful God for the pilgrims band, a shelter in the time of storm. Turn to our scripture reading, which is taken from 2 Corinthians 4, reading verses 8 and 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Amen. Let us pray. Kind Father in heaven, you are mighty, you are awesome, and we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Even now, God, we pause to tell you thanks for the things that you have done, and we are grateful, God. We thank you that we are still mighty God in the land of the living. We thank you, God, even for the coronavirus, mighty God, because it has done much good for some of us, God. It has brought us closer to you, mighty God. It has caused those who are in the land, mighty God, of indecision to make a decision that they want to serve you with their whole hearts. Father, for those of us who have been walking with you, we have recognized, God, that truly we could get a little closer. So you have pointed us, Lord God, even at this time, to read our Bibles more. We thank you. We thank you, mighty God, for the doctors and the nurses across the world who are doing their part, mighty God. But at the same time, we thank you because we know that thou art the great physician. We place our young persons before you, mighty God, even now. We place persons who are struggling at this time before you, and we ask God that you'll remind them that you are still a shelter in a time of storm, that you are still, mighty God, our deliverer. You are still our way make and you are still our provider continue to be with us and bless us each we pray in Jesus' name amen good afternoon and happy sabbath welcome to all our brethren and friends who are joining us this afternoon for our ay program for our viewers on facebook youtube instagram and twitter agle park sda tv we welcome you I pray that as you worship with us this afternoon, your hearts will be blessed. And indeed, you will receive the blessings that God has in store for you. Now sit back, relax, and do enjoy the rest of the program. Good afternoon, everyone in TV land, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We are happy that you have decided to join with us this afternoon as we focus on blessings during a crisis. It is said that everything happens in life for a reason. And sometimes disappointments come with a blessing. And we have been going through this COVID crisis, but in the same breath, several of us have been experiencing the blessings of the Lord as a result of this crisis. Can you think of a time in your life when it was dark? Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a marriage. Maybe your health became compromised. But the Lord found a way to give you a blessing in the midst of it all. It so happened that you were able to not only find a better job, but perhaps you started your own business. You found better friends. You found a renewed relationship with God. Several benefits came from the one negative that occurred in your life. And today, as we look at some of the blessings that we have received as a result of the COVID virus, we just want to 
empower and encourage those of you who might be struggling out there. You think that there is no way out. We want to share our testimonies with you this evening to let you know that God is not through with you yet. And the Lord still has his hand on you. He is still in control. Now when the COVID virus was just, uh, just came upon us, we saw the selfishness of humanity. Persons went out and they bought all the tissues, all the Lysol they could find, all the Clorox they could find, and some of us were not able to make purchases. But after a while, after that storm, there has come a calm, and we see people sharing and really showing that they care for others. At this time, we are going to pause to look at a few individuals who have done so by lending a hand. It's the neighborhood garage, known for its fast service. But the man behind the repair shop. We just want to make sure we're all healthy. Is fixing more than engines. These days, he's helping fix his neighborhood, hit hard by the coronavirus. I just wanted to make sure. Mario Salerno owns roughly 80 apartments in his hometown of Williamsburg. He knows the pain so many are going through. I have been having since the last 10 days a lot of tenants worried, crying, complaining they can't pay and uh, losing their jobs. So he decided this month to waive rent for everyone, everyone, 200 tenants, and he is not collecting. For me, it was more important for people's health and worrying about who could put food on whose table. I had tenants that said they can't work, they didn't have money to pay me. I says, don't worry about paying me, worry about your neighbor, worry about your family. He really is, he's Superman. Caitlin Gunteski has been out of work since her hair salon in Brooklyn shut down. She didn't know how she'd be able to make rent. Now she won't have to. It's a game changer. It is a game changer. I was like, oh great, I have to pack up and move back in with my parents. <laughs> Nobody wants that. We're going to talk about Mario knows he'll take a big hit this month, but his focus right now is on accelerating the health of his neighborhood. It's not about being cool. It's about people's health, and I would hope other people could pass this down. I have my roots here, and uh, I'm not really worried about winning or losing anything. I just worried about the people's health. And one of Mario's coworkers shared this card with me. It was sent to Mario today. It says, I'm unable to work my job right now, and this was such a huge help during this unsettling and stressful time. Like a sheep sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore. And so far from home, I set out in search of a reason to go on. And here I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm cloud may rock, this ship of mine, the light of my Savior, will lead me safely through the night. And though my ship may be rocky, and my sails may be torn, I shall rest. In the eye of the storm, and though the wind and water rages, and the billows begin to roar, the blessed rock of ages brings peace to my soul. He holds me in his arms. So safe and so warm, and there I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm cloud may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night 
And though my ship may be rocky and my sails may be torn, I shall rest in the eye of the storm. And though the wind and water rages and the billows begin to roar, the blessed rock of ages brings peace to my soul. He holds me in his arms so safe and so warm. And there I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm cloud may rock that ship of yours, the light of your Savior will lead you safely through the night. And though your ship may be rocky and your sails may be torn, you shall rest, we all shall rest in the eye of the storm. Thank you, Sister Mary Black. That was a beautiful rendition of that song. No storm clouds will rock the ship of ours. Beautiful. Now, you may be wondering, like that young man who allowed these individuals to go without paying rent for the month of April. That's a wonderful thing. You may be saying, I am young. I don't even own a house. How can I help? Listen. As a young person, you are innovative, you are strong. The Lord has blessed you with many talents, and so you too can do your part. Let's look at these young men who have decided to play a role in society, although they, are, they don't own any property for themselves. This is Trip Wright's 20th grocery haul within the past week. Wearing gloves while grasping a bag in each hand, he takes off to drop off the food he picked out. I felt some, there's some drive to help, help out others. And none of it was purchased for himself. We're gonna fill that fridge and freezer for you. We're gonna keep it going. Instead, the 17 year old has been taking groceries to the elderly and those most vulnerable for getting COVID-19. It's all through the website he created called Zoom Food, where people can request a delivery, make an online shopping list, and have a volunteer drop the items right to their front doorstep. Most kids are probably at home playing video games. Uh, I did that too, but I thought if I have my free time in between um, my, doing my school online and homework, if I can help out those who need it the most, go online, go ahead and do that. So far, 50 volunteers have joined TRIP in making the deliveries across Greater Cincinnati. Each of them must follow the CDC's health guidelines while on and off the job. And while the support is pouring in. We've received $750 in donations in, in just a week. It's clear those who have used the service are glad they did. They put like little thank you signs all over the, the door and the mailbox. Giving those at risk some peace of mind. You guys stay safe. Take care now, okay? Thank you so much. Having a teenager hovering around the fridge at home can be a common sight, but Nicholas DeCanto isn't thinking about himself. So I've seen on TV and online that the coronavirus is pretty um, dangerous for elderly, so I decided that I could try to help them out by shopping for them. The Winchester High School junior posting on the town's resident Facebook page that since he was out of school and had free time on his hand, he was available to make those grocery runs for seniors who may not be able to get out. People like Joan McNeil Bird. I think what he's doing is absolutely fantastic. Joan has self quarantined for two weeks. Nicholas was there to lend a helping hand. He went off shopping for me, got everything but three items, and he said, No, I'll continue looking for them. And I just think it's wonderful. Parents Donna and Stephen not surprised when he came to them with the idea. He's the sort of kid that uh, thinks things through um, and looks to help people. I was in tears. I, I, I couldn't be more proud. You seem to have a pretty good head about yourself. <laughs> have you always been a person that thought of others? Um, I try to when I can. Thank you. Bye.
wasn't that wonderful what those two young men did? They don't own anything thing for themselves, but they still made themselves available and of use. We are now joined by Sister Marlene Reed Little and Elder Carolyn Barnett Phillips, both from the Oak Glade Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, during a crisis, people have a variety of needs. And I just want to allow these ladies to share with you how it is that they have been doing their part during this period of crisis so that they can bless others. You know, Sister Marlene, we have heard of the wonderful news that, the wonderful things that you have been doing. Please share with our viewers on the various platforms. Okay, it's nice to be here. Okay, um, for COVID-19, it's really a challenging time. Yes. It's a challenging time for everybody because, I mean, we have never experienced something like this. But for what I've been doing, it's something that is ongoing. I, as you already know, I operate a school. So what I would do, I would always do care packages for my students Very and good. for my students around the inner city communities and uh, adults who are less fortunate. So whenever I get anything, any sponsors, even though we are a small school and whatever small s resources that we receive, we give back because Th that's all we, that we are followers of Christ. So we have to be doing what God, you know, commissions us to you do. Said, you said small sister Marley and I, I the thought just came to me, little is much when, when God, God is, is in, it. in it. Indeed it is. So what I'll do, as I said before, whatever, resources we get, whatever resources we get, we will give back. So during the COVID-19, I will be calling around, checking upon persons and so forth, you know, finding out how they're doing. What are and some of the things in those care packages? Do you wish okay, to so share Okay, so in the care us? packages, you will find rice, flour, cornmeal, peas, cooking oil, items that can give them at least one week's dinner. Praise God. So I'm sure that for one week, persons are not hungry. Amen. Persons are not hungry. And so, um, but for these care packages that I have been distributing for the other day, for, for those days, as you know, school is out. Yes. So whatever items we have had, we would have distributed them already to students and so forth and our staff. So when, per when I'm calling and I'm checking up on persons and to hear their needs, I couldn't turn my back on them. So what I did, I took it from my pocket. I, t I took it from my household, yes. you know, because at least I'm saying somebody else is having dinner just like how I am. Yes. And uh, I know it would be bothering me. My conscience would be bothering me to know that somebody called and I couldn't offer help, no matter how small it is. Right. So that's what I've been doing. And we, I am now working on a project for to issue to a, a larger scale. Because I know that more persons in the surrounding communities, you know, they are facing challenging time right now. Because we know many parents have lost their jobs and all sorts of things and so forth. And I already know the struggling students that I already have. So I want to ensure that even though my students are at home, they know that we still care for them. So we don't only care for them at school, but we care for them at home as well. Wonderful, wonderful. So that spe speaks to the fact that persons have physical needs. People need food in this crisis. I know for a fact that per there are persons who are at home. They have been laid off. Some persons have, rece have um, received a cut in their salary and yes. that makes a huge difference. I know of an individual who it, she's basically being paid daily, right? But paid by the day now. And it is really a minimal amount. It really can't do much, but um, later, Levine, I must tell you that Many persons are suffering. Yes. They are suffering, and uh, sometimes you want to encourage them. Encouragement is not enough. Because if I'm hungry, and I have two children, and they're hungry, and, I, and you call me, and you're encouraging me, and that's it, and I'm hungry, and my children are hungry, it's going to go through one ear and come through the other. Because Precisely. It means because it's not, it, nothing is being done to what, what I'm going through physically. Precisely. You understand? So... Even for the project that I, I told you that I'm working on now, the thing is what we want to do is invite them on the compound. So we know it's only 10 persons can be you know, at one space. 
So we want to have at least eight parents coming in and uh, the packages would be already set out. So we want to pray with them. Yes. We want to encourage them. So yes. it's not about just coming, pick up the package and go. You no, want, You want them to know who the real we, source we is. Want to know, we want them to know that, listen, there is a protector, there is a provider, there is a deliverer. The real and source. And the real source. So the even if source. you don't know him, I'm going to introduce him right. to you through this right. medium. Praise so God. I don't want to, do, to just come pick and go. No, I want you to come pick, get and go. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Now, I am very much aware that um, Elder Carlin Barnett Phillips is a member of a team that we have here in the Hagley Park District of Churches. And it is an initiative from our pastor, Pastor Omar Oliphant. We are a part of a team, a digital ministry. And we just want to hear from a representative of that team speaking to us about what it is that they do. And Sister Phillips is going to share with us now what is this digital team about? What is it that they are doing? Okay, good afternoon. All who are listening at this um, special time. Well, this program is set up in a way where oftentimes we have visitors come to the, the churches. Yes, they come in maybe for a blessing of baby, for a funeral or even a wedding. Or it happens to basically meet someone in such a time that would need some form of encouragement and we happen to have the names phone and phone numbers now we, this is set up where basically throughout the, the church throughout the district members are given a particular amount of numbers of persons to call at least 10 and basically for some some people do call like every day who can afford to do that some will call once or twice per week now, for me, I call, I call at least two times per week. I call members, you know, I find out how they're doing, what the family's like, and, you know, you talk to them, you get their feeling, what they're going through, if they're okay, and what. And then you encourage them, so you will give them a scripture passage to, to, for the day to go along with, you understand me? And not only that, you pray with them, you pray with them. So you know that then basically you leave them with a good frame of mind. Some from something to hold on to. So what is the what has been the response like to the to the prayers and, and the sharing of the scripture? They're passage? grateful. They're grateful. Persons who have prayed with, you know, I get a million thanks. Thank you. Uh, I remember I was talking to one who, one of my persons, she's living in Portmore, but she works in town. I work in Portmore, but I live in town, so we're opposite, you know. And, you know, she was there saying that they can't even go out and what have you. And I said, I understand. I said, this is not just a one way stream, it is for every one of us just to abide and do. And I think I said, this, I just keep the faith. I said, God promises that you will not give us more than we can manage and he said that whatever the situation is there you know is there with us i have this particular member who is 78 yes 78, 78 that i call and he you know but what happens is that one of our sister normal or bible worker normally visited with him and, you know, now that he see that the church door is closed, he was saying, oh, God, he's locked out. So he said, my sister, I'm ashamed. I'm so embarrassed that when the sister used to talk to me and I used to find enough excuse to tell her, and now the church door is locked. Mm. Speaking to him on, on Monday, you know, and he said to me that, um, he said to me, Sister, whenever you come at the church, just let me know say it's you. Just let me know say you because talking to you, you give me a better understanding. Because he was reading like Genesis and where God says he make um, Eve for Adam because he don't want Adam to be alone. And he was telling me that his wife died six years ago and he oh, don't wow. think that he can really go into the church now without a partner. Well, I said, because we all get it wrong from the beginning, but we should know, we should seek ye first the kingdom of God. God yes. And then things added. I said, God wink at your ignorance. So guess what? You're going to see God now and all the other things will come after anything else you want Amen. to come. Amen. Thank you very much, my two sisters. Yes. And that's a wonderful point to end this segment on, to know that, yes, COVID-19 is here. The crisis is on. 
But guess what happened? God is still interested in saving your soul. Amen. 78, and you're regretting not having listened to the Bible workers, but the Lord is still willing to open his arms and to save you. At this time, we're going to listen to special music. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fade. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deepest waters Your sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You've never failed and you won't start now so I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours and you are mine Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you may call me And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters Wherever you may call me And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith has been made stronger In the presence of my Savior And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours, and you are mine Thank you for that wonderful rendition So, often time we hear what we call a cliche statement, hold on, God will not forsake you. We want to hear from the membership of our church what has God given you to testify about during this crisis. Happy Sabbath, children of God. I'm Sylvan Phillips, Zamor. My testimony this morning is about the goodness of God. How he has come through for me. Um, it was about a week before Easter. I didn't have anything, any money or anything in the house. And my wife, whose job was almost cut in two, or even less than two, 
we were well in need of things and I didn't know where it was coming from. And out of the blue, a young lady by the name of Loving Reed, whom I mentored in her days in Jamaica, called me and said to me, I'm Uncle Sylvan, that's what she called me. I'm going to send something for you, send your information to me. I asked my wife to do it and she did it and I said to Lovie that you can send it to her, she will collect it for me. And Lovie sent something for me first from she has gone to far. <laughs> She's sending something for me. And that is to show you how in the time of my need, not want, my need, God came through for me because he allowed Lovie to send something to me that I could um, cover my need in the time of once, in Easter season, and to be comfortable, although as Adventists we don't really celebrate Easter, but the time just to know that it is the time um, when Christ was crucified and so So I just want to let you know that we are to hang on, don't give up in this time of trial. He said he will never leave us, he will always be there for us, and that we as Christians should not just really believe that because we are Christians we won't go through the great tribulation too. We will go through it. But He will carry us through, He will not leave us in our situation. So I just want to give God thanks and to say glory be to God and I ask you all to keep the faith and don't give up. Whatever you do or say, remember, put God first. Love you all. Greetings, my brothers and sisters, in the wonderful name of Jesus, our soon coming King. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You see, friends, I, I can't complain. God has been so awfully good to me. You know, for those who know me, I am troubled with severe sinusitis. And from time to time, especially during this time, I would be sneezing, I would be, my nose would be running, and I would be sweating, and I would just feel sick. But you know what? During this time, I just feel a little tinge of sneezing, and I just want to praise God for that blessing because, you know, during this time, uh, when persons know, hear that persons are sneezing or coughing, they are ready to retaliate, they are ready to beat up that person, but I just want to thank God for that. Even small mercy, I think it has been simple, but I just want to thank God for even sustaining me during this time. All of these times, I still am going to work, I am still being... Um, surrounded by persons and and I have never ever felt sick to the point that I have to be taking medication so I just want to thank God for sustaining me during this time and guess what you don't have to worry you don't have to fret this too will pass so just continue to trust in God for what he has done in your life for what he's doing and praise him in advance for what he is about to do Continue to trust him. Continue to serve him no matter what. He is a God of the mountain and he's a God in the valley. Continue to praise him. Praise him in a good time. Praise him in the, in the bad. So I just wanted to encourage you. You may not have everything that you need or even want at this time. But remember, God is Jehovah Jireh. God is our healer. God is our friend. And he will come through just in time for you and for me. God is good all the time. God is good. I just do want to magnify Lord the God today. Virgin, I just want to acknowledge your saving grace. My testimony is the last part, the last year to this year I was really stressed out. I lost basically everything. When I think I'm the only one, God is carrying me. I just want to acknowledge your saving grace. But the testimony today is about COVID and what God has been doing for us through this COVID. I just want to magnify his name again, despite all the challenges, all the, the, the difficulties, we still serve a wonderful God. I too just want to testify that he's been good to me. Because despite everything and people laying off and, and the chaos, I still have my job, I still can provide for my family, well for the boys them. I just wanna just wanna acknowledge you. I just want the church to continue to pray for me as it's not easy. 
it's not easy, but I'm getting through day by day, more and more. Bless the Lord and happy Sabbath. I am giving God thanks for the fact that not just because I'm alive, I'm healthy, not because I have a job, but for the fact that I still have good people around me. Let me share a testimony with you. So, last Sabbath, I was home, and while I was watching Pastor Oliphant on YouTube, I got a call from a friend who said, I'm at your gate, open the, the grill. When I opened the grill, I saw this person with two boxes in hand. And I said, what are these? And the person said to me, I went to the supermarket and I don't know whether or not you have enough groceries at home. So I bought some stuff for you. Now, God is a constant provider. Even when we're not expecting things, even when we didn't even pray about it, even when we never asked, because in my view, I would have had enough, enough to serve me until I'm ready to buy again. But you would have touched somebody to say, remember this person. So you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, I give God thanks, I give him glory, I give him honor, I give him praise because he's worthy. So I just want to say, don't lose hope, continue to pray, continue to trust God and in spite of all that is happening around you, God is able. Have a blessed and happy Sabbath and just continue to worship him in spirit and in truth in spite of all that is happening around you Dear christine what wonderful testimonies about the goodness of god during this time of crisis yes they're wonderful indeed and you know sister andrika i too want to share my testimony because the lord has proven himself to me in this crisis okay go ahead my sister and i want all my friends all the persons I have never met before to really listen to what the Lord has done for me. Now, during the course of last week, everything seemed to be falling apart physically for me. My washing machine stopped working. My transmission in my car started giving problems. And my husband said, well, we need to change the transmission. My insurance was also due. It's actually due Friday, the 24th of April. And uh, to be honest with you, I already spent that insurance money on food because we have been at home for, what, four or five weeks? And uh, I've also spent my daughter's school fee on food because we are at home and uh, the children are eating more than ever, Andrika. TV land, the, the, the children are eating, it's like around the clock. It's like eating is a new hobby. And so I have exhausted all of those funds really and truly on food and other household items. And I said, you know what? What am I going to do? And I got a call. I made a call. I made a call and this gentleman, he wanted to just find out, you know, what was going on with me. And I just shared with him, you know, what was really going on. And he said to me, Miss, do you want to me to buy you a washing machine or do you want some money to top up your groceries? And you know, Andrika, I was there saying, you know, this is not hard, you know, because washing the clothes for six persons and my feet, my hands are, I'm allergic to the, the soap. And I said I wanted a washing machine. I just said it like that. And let me tell you something. That was Wednesday in the, af Wednesday in the morning. And Wednesday evening, the gentleman called me to tell me that he bought me the washing machine. And he came to drop it off to my house on Thursday morning. And I was like, I was in awe. I was like, who could it be but Jesus? Now, he dropped it off to me Thursday morning. And Thursday afternoon, I got another call. And this caller wanted to know if everything is all right because they're going to shut down. They feel like they're going to lock down, lock down the city. And I said, well, 
We haven't received our salaries as yet, and I'm not worrying myself. I don't have it. I ended the conversation and went about my business because I was doing something with my, to my, with my daughter. And like an hour after, I checked my phone, and I saw that the lady had sent me a message. And the message simply said, BNS or NCB. You know, Andrika, I was like, what? Anyway, I said, NCB? And the message, the response was to send my bank details. And I sent the details, and I got a voice note telling me that she has put some money into my account. But then what surprised me was when she said she doesn't know if it is enough to buy stuff for my household. And I said to her, my dear, when you have zero and you get 25,000, that is a whole lot. And let me tell you something. I've just been thanking the Lord for all that he has been doing for me. And then during the course of this week, the Lord even made himself plainer and clearer to me as it relates to filling my, fulfilling my needs. He, we, you know I have one laptop. And my daughter has to use a laptop for classes. Kristen also has to use a laptop. My, my eldest daughter, she has to also use the laptop. And uh, I went to a staff meeting. And we were being told that all our sessions are now going to have to be via Zoom. So for the whole day, I will have to be using Zoom for the students. And I asked in the meeting, you know, a pertinent question. If I do that, how is my child? You know, I'm going to need something for my child. And let me tell you, the vice principal spoke to me about an idea, you know, what we, that what we could do. And the same evening, <laughs> let me tell you, the same evening, I got a message on my phone. It was one of my students. And the message simply was, she has an iPad that they want to give away. And because she knows I'm always sharing my computer with my daughter, she wants to give it to me. And I'm like, who could it be but Jesus? Huh? The Lord keeps blessing me over and over and over again, even in this crisis. So I'm not even worrying about the, the, the I'm not worried about anything. And right now, I will drive the car. I don't hear the transmission giving me any problem. I reach where I'm going. It's not under any pressure. And I'm just giving the Lord thanks for all the things that he has been doing for me. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen to men, boys and girls. You have sat, you have listened to the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for his people. You too are his people. You are his sons and his daughters. And he wants to bless you too. At this time, we're asking you that if you have any special prayer request, any special need to come onto our page and you're going to see a link right down the bottom of our screen. It is for our prayer wall. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Whatever you ask, believe in, and asking in his name, he will grant it unto you. So send in your prayer request, and we will be praying for you. At this time, we are going to close with prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, truly it has been a blessing to think about your goodness and what you have done for us during the, this course of crisis, God. Many persons are living in fear. Many people are struggling. Some have got pay cuts. Some have lost their jobs. Some have to close their business, God. But you are still good. You are still working miracles in the life of your people. And mighty God, even now, we put before you those individuals who are sending in their requests or who have sent in their requests already, mighty God. Father, we're praying especially that you reveal to them even now that you are still Jehovah Jireh. You are their provider. Mighty God, we pray in a special way that you reveal to them that you are healer. You still care about their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll allow for them to recognize that you are the one true living God and each and every one of us, mighty God, needs to bow low before you and give our hearts and our all to you. Heavenly Father, even now we put 
each person who is in the hospital and sick, our Lord God, not just with COVID, but whatever other sickness, mighty God, they may be faced with. We ask in a special way that you will be healer for them, healer to them. Mighty God, we pray for our doctors one more time. We pray for our nurses. We pray for the waters. We pray for the porters, mighty God. We pray for the phlebotomists, mighty God. We pray for every person, Heavenly Father, who is in the hospital, who is working on these individuals who have COVID and whatever other illnesses. Heavenly Father, right now I pray for that single mother who is in her household, mighty God, and she doesn't know where her next meal is coming from. Dearest God, I pray that you will send, mighty God, someone to provide this food, but Lord God, help her to recognize that you are the source. Father, for that individual who has just lost their job. Help them to recognize, mighty God, and come to understand that the fact that they are alive, they have hope. Mighty God, we ask that you'll just take control of everything that is going on in our lives right now. Help us to not lose faith. Help us to not lose our confidence in you, mighty God. Because we know, Lord God, that with you, nothing is impossible. We know, Lord God, with you, nothing is too hard for you to do. Dearest God, just take full control of everything. Every complaint, mighty God. And help us in these times to recognize that we need to just give you praise on top of praise. Because, God, you are worthy. Bless and keep and sanctify all of us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.